my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to look at deploying a retail deployable package. A retail deployable package is what we get when we compile the uh, retail source code or the commerce source code. Uh, specifically, we need to do that when we customize um, Microsoft Space Logic for um, the commerce system. The commerce is used uh, when we have a point of sale or an e-commerce website, specifically with Microsoft Dynamics 365 um, for commerce or for Microsoft uh, Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So the quick kind of overview of the architecture is both the e-commerce website and the modern POS uh, application will actually call what's uh, called the retail server website the retail server website contains a bunch of base Microsoft DLLs as well as any custom DLLs that you deploy there. Um, and this contains all the business logic of running the point of sale application or the e-commerce uh, website. So calculating a price or searching for products, all of that's done in the retail server website. Uh, so uh, in order to get a retail deployable package, there's really a couple things we need to do. We need to start with the retail SDK, which is all of Microsoft's source code. And then we build that retail SDK, all those files, and it generates a retail deployable package. That package contains a couple different things. It contains the um, point of sale installer files, the hardware station stall installer files, um, as well as the retail server DLLs that we need to deploy. So today we're gonna to look at that. Um, and so let's get started. The first step is uh, where do we find the retail SDK? Um, really the only way to get the retail SDK um, at this moment in time, this may change in the future, is uh, to create a new cloud hosted development environment in LCS. Um, so if you're familiar with creating uh, Dynamics 365 FNO, um, machines uh, in LCS, you'll be familiar with creating a cloud hosted environment. So right now I'm in a cloud hosted environment and the location that we need to go to is actually the K drive. On the K drive, we have a retail SDK folder. And inside this folder is all of the point of sale um, source code and DLLs that we need to modify um, base Microsoft code or really extend base Microsoft code. Eventually, we're gonna build this code into a package, um, but let's go over a few other things first. So in a cloud hosted environment, we get all these retail SDK files, but if you have applied any kind of updates um, to this environment, um, the LCS will leave all of these files alone. They will actually just put a new copy of the retail SDK a little deeper in. So this is where this update folder comes in. If you have this update folder, you can go into here. In here, you'll usually see just some really long GUID string as the name of the folder. What you wanna do is locate the folder that is has the most recent date modified. That's gonna be your most recent um, copy of the retail SDK. If we uh, go into this folder, um, you're gonna get an exact copy of the retail SDK, but this will be the most recent version. We can check the version just to make sure it matches what we're looking for by opening this Microsoft version file. If I double click on it, it just contains a build version uh, number. So in this case, 10.0.689. something else. And we can actually correlate this build version number um, to a application uh, number by actually just searching um, on a certain website to find that. So if we go to Google and then we actually search for a Microsoft uh, D365 versions, we can find this what's new or changed in D Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. And on this page, I'll make it full screen, we can see the build number here 
and the version number that go corresponds with it. So if I look at this, we're really looking at just these first two pieces. I know that this version is within the 10.0.16 application version, and that's great. Um, if I had looked at maybe one of the earlier or other retail SDK copies, I'd see that those were on an earlier version. Now that I have that, I'm going to close this browser. Um, and again, I said earlier that this folder is a really long GUID number um, at first. You can rename it to something shorter. So I just renamed mine to the letter B. The reason for doing this is if I need to copy this folder somewhere else, then um, usually that GUID folder number is too long with all of the files and subfolders within it. And so you'll get an error message if you try to copy it. But if you rename it first, that'll shorten the overall path of all those files and allow you to copy it. So I then copied this whole folder um, to a new folder, and this is just what I recommend you do. So I went to C drive, retail, 10 dev is my source control branch that I set up and then I pasted all of those files within this folder. The reason why I recommend you do this is because then you've got your K drive as a backup um, in case you mess something up here you can always delete this folder and, and recopy from your K drive. Okay so now we've got our retail um, SDK files in place. Now we need to look at how do we actually build these files into a retail deployable package. The way we do that is we go to the Windows Start button, and then if we type in developer command prompt, this is what we want, and as of 10.0.16, we definitely want um, for Visual Studio 2017. So this is the current version uh, that we need to use for building the uh, retail deployable package. I'm then gonna right click and say run as administrator, and that'll open up our developer command prompt. Right now, it's uh, not in the correct folder. We want it to get to this folder here. Um, so I'm gonna actually just copy that path, um, but you could type it out by hand. And then I'm gonna type CD for change directory. And then I can paste in here by actually uh, right-clicking on my mouse will paste it in, otherwise I can type in that path myself. Then I'm gonna click enter to get into the path. Next, there's one specific command to actually build um, this whole retail SDK code. Um, I'm gonna call MS build, I'm gonna hit space, and then forward slash P colon configuration equals release. So if you're familiar with MS Build, you've probably seen this syntax before, but really I'm just telling it to build all of our um, solutions in uh, release mode. The system, it, it's pretty complicated, so I'm not going to explain everything that it's trying to do. It's, it's going to run a lot of different things, um, build some solutions. It's going to pull down DLLs um, from the internet uh, by restoring NuGet packages. Um, but at the end of the day, when I hit enter on this, it's going to run for about five minutes um, and do everything needed to build our solution and then generate our package. So when it's all done, it's actually going to look like this. I just opened um, my other command prompt. You may get a bunch of warnings. That's okay as long as we didn't get any errors. If we get any errors, that means that the package didn't successfully um, get built. But you can see here in my case it ran in um, a little over four minutes. Um, it may vary for you kind of depending on your internet speed and if it's pulled down the NuGet packages that it needs already. So once I've built this package, what it's really done is it has put new files in this packages folder. So if I go into the packages folder, I've actually got several different folders um, with kind of some different zip files, but specifically for the retail deployable package, I need to go into the retail deployable packages folder. Once I'm in that folder, um, the, what the system really has done is it's created this content dot folder with all the files we need in it. And then it has uh, actually zipped it and renamed it this retail deployable package. So this is the file we want. Um, next, to actually get this into our environment and to use it, we need to log into LCS. So we need to go to lcs.dynamics.com. 
and then sign in and then go to the asset library. So let me bring that up. So once I've signed into my project folder, um, I'm gonna click on these three lines at the top and select asset library. That will bring me to this form right here. Um, and then I need to go to the retail self-service package. Is Now this is where things have changed a little bit. Uh, pre 10.0.16, we needed to actually upload that retail deployable package to this tab here. I would do that by clicking this plus button. I would give it a name. Um, I would select add a file and I would s specify this zip folder right here and I would upload it. I'd hit confirm, it would validate that it's successful and then it would show up here. Then I would go to my specific environment that I'd like to apply this retail deployable package. Um, I'd go to the full details page of that environment and I would click maintain apply package and I would select my retail deployable package. That will both kind of deploy the um, point of sale installers, the hardware station installer, the self-service installer, as well as deploy any custom retail server DLLs that we need on that environment. Now, um, starting with 10.0.16, this process has actually changed. Um, so we still need the uh, to build the retail deployable package, but we really don't need the package itself anymore. Um, we just need to upload the installers to LCS. Um, and that's what we're getting out of building this retail deployable package. This may change again pretty soon here in a few months, um, but for now, this is kind of the way you get the installers. So if we actually back up, we could find them in this content folder, um, or we can back up one directory to packages and go to the retail self-service folder. And inside here, we also have a content dot folder. And inside there, we can go into retail self-service and packages. Um, and then these are our four installer files. So we have the hardware station setup installer file, the modern point of sale setup uh, installer file, the modern point of sale offline uh, installer file. You would either choose one or the other of these when you're setting this up. And then we also have the store system setup installer file if you're installing the channel database on a local store instead of using, using a um, commerce cloud scale unit. Um, so each one of these files then actually get uploaded to um, another, uh, actually to this retail self-service packages folder. And actually I misspoke earlier, the place we want to upload the uh, retail deployable package is actually this software deployable package. This is where we um, used to upload it. Now we go to the retail self-service package and we just upload the um, these installers themselves. We do it the same way by clicking the plus button, giving it a name such as MPOS, uh, set up installer file, click add file and select the installer itself. Hit confirm, it'll upload this file. Um, I've actually got another article uh, that I've written to basically give you those steps a little bit more in detail and kind of tell you what you need to do after you've uploaded those installers. Um, so I'll leave that to the other um, video and article, um, but this is how we get the installer files up here. We no longer need to upload the entire retail deployable package with the retail server DLLs. We actually apply the retail server DLLs a separate way. And I'll save that for a second video and second article as well. Um, so in conclusion, we still need to build and uh, this retail deployable package. We're just no longer uploading it itself. We're just using that process to build the installers for us and upload those installers to this retail self-service packages tab in the asset library. So I know that's a, a lot of complicated things, so please feel free to ask questions in the comments. Um, thank you so much for watching.